Chew Bubblegum, recorded from a secret location in the city that moves mountains. Greetings. I have come here to chew bubblegum and get gas, and I'm all out of bubblegum. What's up, Flockers? And we do have a special guest with us. He is known as Chaotic603 from TikTok. Chaotic, welcome to Here to Chew Bubblegum. Thank you. Thank you. Very honored to be here. How is everyone doing this morning? I know that it's been a little struggle for the queen. And uh, before you talk about the uh, direction the farm is taking, I want to get everyone's opinion. Joe Biden on the bicycle falling off. Was that not some of the funniest shit that you have ever, uh, that you've ever seen? I mean, I, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, okay. So Rebecca, to, to fill you up to speed, um, Joe Biden Spent yet another series of days in Delaware, his home state, where he has spent more days than actually in the White House thus far, and was on a bike ride through a golf course, went over across a road, and stopped because there's a group of people there. He stops and immediately just right over. I couldn't get past his drop dead comment, um, but hold on a second. Why are we bicycling through a golf course? (laughs) <laughs> like, because, good very good because he was going to throw his new fake hip out if he played golf so he had to do something else they allow bikes on golf courses I thought you couldn't wear a certain type of fucking shoes and they're letting fucking Joe Biden with his training wheels across the green like I don't I think there was like actually a little bike trail and I think that yeah, this it was, was the, on the path this was the real Joe Biden because he was riding his bicycle like a man his age was so <laughs> Huffy wanted to sponsor him, but Hunter messed that up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Chaotic, what's, what's your thoughts on Joe Biden and his uh, very, very sad and tragic bicycle accident? I, what is he even doing? Now, it's not like there's a whole bunch of stuff in the country that needs addressing. We're just going to take a ride on our bike. Well, but that's probably one of the most hilarious right, things I've seen in a while. Then back over to Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know. Yeah, he uh, he uh, you know he is uh, showing us how to live green. Don't worry about gas being seven, eight, nine, ten bucks a gallon. Get out and ride your bicycle. You'll have fun. That's it. So we can just. I'm just gonna say. The ground. Sucker. I'm just gonna say this for Rebecca. Since he couldn't ride his bike with no handlebars, he dropped it like it was hot. (laughs) Now, we do have a new addition to Short Farms. And it is amazing because after I sent out the show stuff yesterday, I sent a TikTok. And uh, you're going to have to change the name of Short Farms to Dog Planet. So, real quick, I would just like to give a, a huge shout out to my boss, Cam. Thanks, came dickhead, for uh, jinxing me here. Uh, and I've said that straight to his face already. And uh, he goes, why is that? Uh, and I said, well, you had to make the comment after I showed you Zena, didn't you? He goes, why? I said, because the vet came today and left another one here. But he's taking it. Taking it. But he still so, jinxed it, and it still happened. So here's, so here's the story. So for those of you that don't know, so Zena... She's in the dog bed with Grace. Um, she, I found her on our road. I, I was trying to go to the grocery Last store. Last Saturday. It was Saturday? <laughs> yeah. Because you said, Saturday? okay, yeah. so no, let, me, let me give, no, it was Saturday. It was Friday. It was Saturday. It was Thursday. Let, it was Saturday. Let me give you all, because remember, I stopped it. I stopped at our neighbors to pick my water tanks back up because I was going to go get water the next morning, which was Sunday. It was Saturday. I'm I'm cleaning up at work. I text Rebecca, hey, I'm getting ready to leave. She goes, okay, Kel took shot of the store. And then immediately follows up with, I have a surprise for you. So I'm thinking, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Yikes. So I come home 
Well, I, I stop over. I go up my neighbor's driveway, pick he up my water tank. He didn't tell me he was going to the neighbor's. <laughs> it's on the way. It's stop, not. Pick, it is. I have to pass his house either way to get to our driveway. Came up, got the water tanks, loaded them up, came across the field. Kel had gotten home at the same time as I'm coming across the field. And uh, park my truck, and I see Rebecca, and then I see this little black and white thing next to her. And I come walking up. She goes, surprise. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> the dog. <laughs> <laughs> The dog, that's what it is. It's a dog, like, you moron. Dog. Now, now, hang on, hang on. Every guy out there can feel my pain when his wife says he has a surprise and he comes home and finds another bitch. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, so I was trying to, to be fair. And, and this dog was, was on the side of the road and she was wet and shivering and thin. And I'm like, fuck, I can't just. I'm convinced she came out of the time portal barn. So I took her, super sweet, pulled all she of these ticks out of her ears. Like she was a mess. She got a bath. So I call my my horse vet because I have I'm on I'm on the VIP list with right. the vet. And I'm like, listen, because we have the Pyrenees puppies too, right? And I'm like, hey, um, everybody needs like uh like shots and wormer, like it's time, we gotta do all this. I'm not manhandling four fucking dogs at a vet clinic in a waiting room with possibly also a three-year-old like it's just not gonna happen i don't have i'm not an octopus i don't have enough arms so i was like hey could you just like come to the property and do this she's like sure so she pulls up to the front yard honks her horn and is like standing on a running board she goes i brought you something and i see him in the front seat i'm like what's that she was like a dog i'm like okay fair enough because that's the same conversation me and dirty dan had the other week um so and she goes, oh, my God, he's so cute. She goes, he was on your road. He's yours now. No, bitch. Mm -mm, we ain't doing this. I was like, I am not a dog kennel. And she was like, oh, but he's already, like, fitting in. Like, he was getting along with all the other dogs and everything. I was like, you got to take him. Like, I can't do I can't do five dogs. Like, I just got this dog. None of them are potty trained. They're all under six months old. Like, I can't. I can't. And so she's like, listen, if you don't want him, I'm going to have to call the Humane Society and take him to the pound. Don't say it that way. You know what you're doing. Oh. Like, don't say it that way. Don't tell me those things. Give me the Guilt fucking trip. dog, right? So. Meanwhile, I'm at work. <laughs> and I get the text message that says, hey. I have a surprise. Can you call me quick? No, she said, hey, can you call me quick? And I was working. So the next time I was able to check my phone, I text back. Yeah, explain what's going on. She goes, okay, well, text me because I'm dealing with a problem. I said then I don't hear nothing I said a for situation. fucking 45 minutes. Now, see, you know. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then Listen. finally, finally, now it's I our get call. <laughs> get the call. And she's like, FaceTime me real quick. <laughs> so I hit the FaceTime button. And then I'm like, uh, uh what? What is that? And she explains the situation. You're, uh, <laughs> Rebecca. You're not allowed to count the animals. That was the rule when we got the 50 acres. You weren't allowed to count the animals. I rescued that, things. You knew what that you were signing was, up for. That's all that was side. not the rule that I couldn't count the animals. You just said I couldn't kill any of the ones with names. Well, they're all well. Names. I want to say this, <laughs> Rebecca, you are a hero. Thank you for taking those dogs in because, I mean, they would have ended up at the pound. You are, There's for real, a hero. And when I come to Flock Fest, or the next time, I, if I come back down, and I'll probably come back down before Flock Fest, I'm going to pick up every stray dog I see on the highway, put it in the back of my truck, and I'm bringing it with me. You know what, Goose? You know what, Goose? Let's take this one step further. Any, any stray animals you see, like all, turtles, cats, if there's a donkey running down the road, I'll take that. You know what I mean? Just okay. pile them all up. Okay. You. I mean, I'd be okay with a donkey, too. <laughs> you have got it. Well, you know, hey, uh, donkey wouldn't be a big step, uh, Rebecca, because you already live with a jackass. What trait? Oh, just, just kidding, buddy. I, I just honestly kidding. figured you were going to say an ogre, 
Yeah. And we already yeah. have the Puss in Boots. So. Well, hey, there um, you go. <laughs> so that's, that's where my mind is because of watching Shrek 98,000 times on repeat hey, with my three-year-old. Hey, Shrek is a good movie. Shrek is a good movie. It's a great movie when you watch it, when you want to watch it, and not on repeat for a week and a half straight. Oh, I have I have went through that phase many, many, many years ago. Now, Darian got hooked. Or, or a month and a half straight because no interwebs in the fucking boonies. Now, when Darian was little, he got hooked on this stupid Ronald McDonald video that my mom picked up at like a flea market. It was like a 30-minute cartoon where he goes into outer space. Oh, man, that sucks so bad because we're talking about eight hours every day of watching this over and over. And, and I wanted to pull my eyeballs out. You know, oh, it, it was horrible. It, it was horrible. And, and um, I, I just want every I, – I know I sound incredibly condescending about this situation – uh, I love the dogs. I don't want Xena to go. I also don't want Trigger. Yes, I named him Trigger because he triggers everything here. Including your anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, sev no, severely, Goose. Like, I was I was struggling he's the other so night. so happy and so, like, he's, yeah. he was way worse than Xena was. And he's just so happy to get attention. And he's a pure pit. Like, he's a pit. So he's got the paws and the fucking tail. There was blood. He caught his tail on the fucking counter. I couldn't figure out what it was. There's blood all over my fucking kitchen because he caught his tail. Oh, shit. And it went everywhere. Yeah. And he's he's uh, he's such a pretty boy. He's and cute. he's so fucking sweet and incredibly lovey and incredibly thankful. But also, he's a pit that is still a puppy. He's four months So he old. is like, he is like, I mean, take some like, West Virginia shake and bake user plus training for decathlon pasta high and mix that energy, those energy levels together. And, and that's, that's what this dog is. <laughs> yeah. So you, there. you, you do have a home for him though, right? Yeah. He leaves yes. Monday after he gets snipped. Okay. Poor guy. Um, we do have someone new joining us on Twitch. Sharon Burke. Thank you very much. <laughs> And welcome to Here to Chew Bubblegum. Uh, I guess we'll start out with some emails. And uh, Chaotic, after we read the emails, uh, please, you know, help us answer these and give us your thoughts and opinion. And Dirty yeah, you're Dan, first on answering the questions. Yes, yes, you are. And Dirty yeah. Dan, did you get the one <laughs> that I messaged you last night? Okay. I did. And you can start out for us this morning, Dirty Dan. All right. So, uh, man, <laughs> it has been so long since I got to read. Bless you. Thank you. Good Lord. I hope you're not allergic to dogs. No, it's just everything that grows around me. It's okay. fine. Are you I'm okay? Good. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> from, from my favorite intimate listener, Dixon09. Hello, my Roswell family. Great show last week, but I wouldn't expect anything less from my favorite podcast. I have a few questions this week and apologize in advance for what may be a long email. Question one, have you guys noticed any actual UFOs or new disclosure activity? I've noticed more activity at night lately than in the past. Also, I've noticed via the World Wide Web, there isn't much news on crop circles lately. Question two, what's your thoughts on some missing person cases actually going through a portal to another dimension, being abducted by UFOs, or even being kidnapped by our government? And then question three, this one is for Dirty Dan. Last week, you seemed disappointed with the new dog that found you <laughs> and Rebecca being abducted by UFOs or even being kidnapped by our government. I totally reread the second question. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, you did. New dog that found you and Rebecca. What are your plans for the farm once you get it up and going? As always, thanks for taking time to read my email, Roswell. That was Alice. a very, very good email, uh, Dixon09. Thank you very much for writing in. Yes, uh, Chaotic603, we will let you start out. And uh, do, you, do you want me to reread his first question? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think I got it. First part was, have I noticed any UFOs? Yes. Or declosures? I, I mean, in the past, absolutely. But lately, I have a theory of that's why they're messing with the weather. Because... Sunny days seem to be shorter and far 
in between. So I feel like there's all kinds of stuff going on, and that's why it's been so cloudy and stormy and everything else lately. So I feel like that's why people have been seeing less of them lately and the crop circles and all that because of what could be potentially coming or happening now. There ain't enough crops to do circles in. Yeah, I was just going to say that feels that they haven't burned yet. <laughs> that too. <clears throat> but uh, what was the second part of the question? Uh, the second part was... What are your thoughts on some missing person cases actually going through a portal to another dimension, being abducted by UFOs, or even being kidnapped by our own government? All of the above? Yes. I agree. I mean, pretty much, it's all been proven that so do you people guys are getting know kidnapped for reasons. Yes. No. So no. the four one one is all of the, the all of the missing people that go missing around state parks. And please correct me if I'm wrong, Goose, but okay. this is like mostly children. Yes, it is. Um, that go missing in parks, and a lot of them are like their their clothes and like the children are found like. 20 miles away from where they got lost. Like there's no way that they could have traveled that distance from when they got lost to when they found them. If they're so found at, at, at all. Right. If they're found at all, or like their clothes or something are like several miles away from where they got lost. And the, the story behind it is that there's portals and they're getting abducted and they're just, they're just vanishing. And I have chills right now. But the other thing, too, with the parks is the stairs. Like, there's these random staircases that go nowhere. And if you go up, that said that if you go up the stairs, especially children will go up the stairs, they just fucking disappear because you walk into another fucking dimension. I'm sorry, but if I see a set of stairs in the woods that lead to nowhere, I'm going to have to walk up them. I you have don't to. Do I, don't do I it. I have to. I have don't to. do it. <laughs> I have to. I'm sorry. I'm going to go at least halfway up. <laughs> I'm going to go all the way. Now, I may not, like, walk through at the main top, but I'm going to walk up them uh, fuckers and, uh, you know, see see where it goes to. You might not be able to come back, though, Goose. I hope I can. It's weird, though. That's legit. Like, I looked it up. There's stair reports of staircases all over the place. Like, why? Mm -hmm. What? Why is it there? No structure around it, just random staircases of different right, materials, all kinds like of stuff. It used to be a house, and that's like all that's left of it. Like they're like placed there. Yep, it's crazy. Hey guys, it's okay. Goose will be fine. He'll just migrate back after the cold season. Sorry. <laughs> or I will just transform into a dog and find my way back to uh, short forms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you're coming back. And. Uh, and and that brings us to question three, Dirty Dan. What are your plans for the farm once you get it up and going? Hide. <laughs> Why? Why? So I'm no, going um, to feel this one because it's going to be my farm. Oh, okay, please. Um, and I'm the one that's here and and running the animals. So the the goal. Yeah, I bought and paid for it. She just gets to use it. <laughs> well. I do all the I do all the dirty work, Dirty Dan. She got you there. You mean cleaning up after cleaning up after all the dogs you bring in? <laughs> yeah, I'm literally cleaning up shit. And shit. So I'm potty training everybody, including you. Um, <laughs> so the plan for short farms is uh, we're going to get some fencing in now that the hay fields are getting cut and rolled this week. They've already been cut, but they're getting rolled this weekend. Uh, the tractor is actually sitting out there for it, but we're going to get the fencing up and then get the horses here. I'm going to do boarding training lessons with the horses. We're going to have a ring put in um, and the, and the driveway fixed by the same guy that's doing our hay. And then on top of that, I'm also doing a livestock rescue and now apparently a dog rescue, which I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do a dog rescue. So we'll do dogs. She said basically. that about the dog rescue. But she also told me that the one horse she really doesn't ever want is an off the track thoroughbred mare. And so what is the first horse that she gets when we are together? An off the track thoroughbred mare. 
I'm just gonna stop reverse manifesting shit because apparently <laughs> that's what's happening. Just no, no. Just next up, please, just please say that you don't want a nice, brand new, worked up Dodge Dually. I please don't. Say that. <laughs> I don't. Get into dually. <laughs> have a dually. Just imagine all, all the dually. all the dogs that could fit in the back of the dually. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it is. So yeah, I'm up to my eyeballs in um, potty training and trying to feed everybody at once without there being a dog fight over food and making sure that everybody gets what they're supposed to get. Plus also tiny psycho on top of that. It's been fun. It's been fun. That's actually what happened to my eye. My daughter fucking nailed me fist to open eyeball. That was fun. Now dirt. You didn't put her up to that. Did you dirty Dan? I wasn't even here for it. You were actually you were in the shower. Playing. You were actually you were in the shower. Oh, I thought you said it was at work. No. Oh, great. I'm guilty um, by association. Rebecca, do you want to take the next email? I sure can. I sure can. This is from Speaker. I've listened to your show for the last few months. You've talked about chemtrails before. A few shows back, it was said that they were good. There were good and bad ones. Can you elaborate on that? Do you know anything about chemtrails, Alan? I know a little bit. I mean, <clears throat> I don't see how any of it could be good. So I had this theory, and this actually ties into what you were saying earlier about the UFOs, like not being able to see them because they're covering the sky, right? Like the chemtrails make the clouds and then we can't see shit. So I believe that there's chemtrails and I believe that there's contrails, right? Because Dirty Dan had to explain this to me after we got into an argument over it. Um, so there's chemtrails and there's contrails. The contrails are the ones that are just, like your exhaust on your car, right? Like same concept. Water vapor. It's water yeah. vapor off the wings of the plane. Yeah. Just like when you start your car in the morning and you see the exhaust, same concept in my mind, same concept, but they disappear like right after the plane, right? Like they disappear. The chemtrails are the ones that you see and they're usually in like a tic-tac-toe pattern and then they spread out. And then I don't know if you guys saw my video, but there's like all of a sudden all of these cloud types now that are in that like the ocean that got created, like all of a sudden there's all these different clouds. I remember like three or four clouds, not fucking 17. So there's that. And then I was also speaking that maybe because some of the chemtrails have changed, they've changed the times that they're doing them. They've changed the patterns. They're not blocking the sun anymore. And they've started running at night. And with all of the growth that we've had this year with plants and shit coming back in people's gardens that hasn't bloomed in years and the the, um, the amount of time that it took this hay to grow it shouldn't have grown this quickly um i wonder if there if some of them are therapies to try and and bring gaia back to try and regrow some stuff and get rid of the damage that was my theory last the last couple shows aka oops we fucked up a little bit too much yeah we we, we should probably we should probably fix that mm. What I don't get about the chemtrails is the denial from the masses that this actually exists. I'll never understand that. Like, I've made a couple posts about weather modification, and people just deny it to no end, even though you can look it up. It's been going on since World War One. Well, Mike it. Rowe, Jeremy Clarkson, like, all these figures are at um, Harp and DARPA stations. Like, yeah. Jeremy Clarkson did a special on Top Gear because they were at a track right next to it, the cloud generator, and it just produces this giant amount of fucking clouds. People are like, "That's fake." They do it in like, Dubai for weddings because it's part of the ceremony for it to rain. I, I, I just I don't get how people still don't deny it and focus right on it. I mean, this is the sky above us. It's crazy. Well, yeah. you know, all right, look at. The economy in our country, the way it is. Look at gas. Look at the rising food cost, shipping, all that stuff. What can they do next? And I, I hope that I'm wrong. I think that a large part of the United States will have a drought this summer, a, a severe drought that will also half of it's already in severe drought you know that that will also play an effect on crops that we grow 
forcing the price of corn and everything else to skyrocket, you know, and, and that has an effect all the way around. I think this drought will be uh, man-made. I think our government will be behind it. Now, if you would have told me this, that I would be saying this five years ago, I would have laughed at you and been like, that's, that's crazy, that's nonsense. But look at the picture, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to cripple everyone to depend on our government. And what better way you've got everything, you know, out of control, high prices. Let's throw a drought on these people. I you really think seven? that we'll see a drought this summer. They're setting the stage for it. Can't stand like a, me drying up. Motherfucker can't even stand on a bicycle in fair weather. <laughs> yeah, but you you don't really think it's him. I mean, it's somebody behind him pulling the strings. Um, yeah, that's weird. Uh, it looked like someone pulled him over. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Rebecca? Uh, I also want to... Uh, well, I guess we can bring that up later. The cows that died. Yeah, yeah. I've been you on you that, can go ahead so. and talk about it now. Um, well, I didn't know. I didn't look at the show for a minute. Do we have, like, open topics somewhere? You guys always yell at me for not having a uh, topic. We can, we how, about, how about you just make that your topic? We can make so that your topic. Segment one. All right, well, we can save it for segment one. Are we in segment one? I don't even know where we're at. No, but no. the other thing I want to say, too, is remember they told us? Remember they told us that there was another lockdown coming? Yeah. And you were like, oh, they're not going to lock us down. The fuck they won't. This is how they're doing it. This is how the lockdown's going to happen. They're going to make fuel so expensive that you're not going to want to leave your house, right? They're going to take away food. They're going to fucking burn crops. They're burning all the plants, which I also think has a good side to it, too, right? Because they're getting rid of all the shit. And it's actually forcing people to become self-sufficient, to really buckle down and be like okay what's a necessity and what's a want what do i need for survival and what's nice to have right it's bringing people down to those roots and it's going to create community and i feel like that's really important and we need to stay on that path because if we focus too much on the fact that everything is going to shit then it will continue to go to shit the only community it's going to create is lots of lots and lots of unneeded townhomes are piled on top of each other houses because it's now costing farmers an average of 780 dollars to run one acre of crop that only yields $140. So I know farmers are good hearted people, but when you have 20,000 acres of crop and your cost is almost $800 an acre and your return is less than 14%, they're not going to do that. They're going to end up folding and losing their land. Yeah. And people like, people like Bill Gates who owns the most crop land in America is going to take over. I owns the most crop land in the world now, sir. Is it the world now? He owns he owns over two million acres cumulatively. Now uh, is two hundred and twenty five thousand in the US alone. Is That's insane. is Bill Gates still the largest property or is he now the largest property owner in the world or does that still go to uh McDonald's? No, it's no I believe Bill Gates okay, surpassed okay. them several months ago. Okay. Okay. He he acquired. To, he's trying of the to get Amazon. us on synthetic meat. That's why the cows died. Uh, that's uh, it. Some of this stuff makes me angry. Really, really, really angry. Um, I'll, I'll I'll finish out the email segment here. Last name Sloan says hello there. Last name Sloan. To refresh everyone's memory, I started listening to the show when it was on the radio last summer. Uh, since I since then, I began listening to the podcast show as well. Earlier this week, my local television station reported on a story at or around where I think Bunker Studios is located. With Goose's recent confession, was he involved in this? If so, is he okay? I understand that you have shortened the email part of the show. And if mine isn't picked uh, to be read, could you please rep- uh, reply? Roswell, my friends, thank you very much. Last name Sloan, that is true. Uh, what you saw, and uh, I am fine. Thank you very much. Um. I want to thank you. Well, we got one more email. It's a yep. long one that I gave to Dirty Dan because Dirty Dan said in the past, if you write 13 page emails, we'll read them on the show. But this one is very entertaining. It's not 13 pages, but it is from friend of the show, Mr. Bowen Cox. And family. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me get my Bowen voice here. <clears throat> Hello, gang. Chaotic. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to laugh. (laughs) I'm backed up on the trail this week and still have plenty of chores to get done. I hope it's okay that I passed the pen and paper over this week 
and maybe give someone else a voice and an outlet to vent. I hope it's okay that I do that. But my buddy Slade, the Saucac, Vornet, has something to say this week. He's a distant kin of my papa's brother's sister's uncle and is no stranger to the trail. <laughs> Roswell, Paul and Cox. P.S. Blow is Slade's so too. And I asked him if he was up to date with the here to chew bubble gum. And he simply replied, does water get wet when you douse it with flammable sap? <clears throat> Hello, you yellow belly cousins. Let me start off by saying my name is Slade the Salsack. That's my handle amongst my realist compadres. Y'all can call me that. We bueno. Vornet. Finally, Cousin Cox has let me right in. And I might not get another chance to get the record straight. So here we go. Buckle up, babies. It's a doozy. <clears throat> Politicians, all of them, can eat a big fat horse codger. Don't care what you call yourself, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Humanitarian, don't matter. From George W. to Hillary to Nixon to Biden, George W.'s daddy, to the Mormon who tried to beat Obama to that good-for-nothing orange face with small hands, all of them. Even the ones that pretend they ain't politicians and turn around and be trying to run for some shit. Fuck them all. That's the philosophy I adopted. And don't think that I'm the only one talking about the big fancy pol uh, politicians either. No sirs and ma'ams. I'd like to include the underbelly ones too. The last thing this world needs is a magistrate. And usins know it, it would be admissible for Slade the salt sack for it to say something like, why, why, why? Would you need a jailer to run silly sallies that be hiring like a truck driver and requiring CDLs when really you ain't got a truck and nothing to haul and all you got for a muck to do is run the boat over to the neighboring dock to pick up a load of carp that you special order for the date you don't have Thursday night after the worm digging class you currently signed up for at the university you're paying to show you how to dig up fucking worms. <sighs> what we need is someone to drain the swamp, really drain the swamp. Now, I'm not talking about electing some foolish, carrot-looking feller who at the end of the day is just going to swindle $250 million out of his blindly loyal followers to pocket for himself. No, I'm talking about we need someone to really come in and drain the motherfucker. Our political system is broken in every aspect. We won't help people with starving babies and then try to punish others for making a rational decision after that night of drinking Jaeger and fornicating with no rubber or not even an attempt to pull out. Don't even get me started on gay people and transgender peeps. Just to mention the individuals that fall into this category, burst blood vessels and foreheads across middle America, and the politicians use this in every way they can. A quick example is when a woman born as a man wants to use a woman's restroom or vice versa. Apparently some politicians actually believe, or want to believe, women's bathrooms across America are littered with perverts sitting patiently to, what, rape your wife, finger your mother, try to have your daughter see the tip of a small prick through his unruly bush? I mean, Jesus Christ. Why aren't we sending some of these magistrates out here to hunt down these sexual deviants? Somebody, quick, call the law. We have a woman with a hairy poke <laughs> leaning over into Grandma Ethel's stall, and poor Grandma Ethel, all she was trying to do was take a shit in peace. Shits in peace are hard to come by for Grandma Ethel these days, you know. I don't know about you or not, but I'm tired of living in a system so far out of touch with reality that the people running it wouldn't know their own ass from a hole in the ground. It's pathetic that we even let it get this far. We have given up. Somewhere along the way, the majority of us said, fuck it, and we go to work daily making so little that when we go home, we say fuck it and get faded all, all while watching all these elite billionaires that really run things shoot themselves on the edge of space and cock shit rockets. <laughs> <laughs> we do this until the next idiot comes along and tells us, I'm here to change things, drain the swamp, build back better, make America great again, hope and change, putting people first, no child left behind, etc., etc., etc. Lie after lie after lie. All strung out by the silver tongue devils, we keep appointing and giving the power to do so. I guess if 2016 to 2022 has taught us anything, is that we need massive overhaul of the system. Slade, the saw sack fornit, believes this, and that's why I'm throwing my name out there for president of the New World Order. My first promise is to make bathrooms gender neutral, and not only that, but I promise to put glory hole access in every single one. This November, vote Slade, the saw sack fornit. Slade the Saw Sack Fornet. Vote for president for the NWO 2022. And always remember, don't swap horses when crossing streams. Official campaign slogan paid for by Pressed Lemon Farms. Yeah. So 
Thank you very much, Mr. Bowling Cox. And well, what was Slade the Varmint? Was that basically what his nickname Slade was? Slade the Soft Sack Varmint. Okay, okay. You know, he, he mentioned stuff there. <clears throat> and someone was telling me yesterday that uh, in Moorhead, Kentucky, they are installing urinals in the women's bathroom. What's your guys' thoughts on that? Um, chaotic, we'll start with you. All bad. I don't agree with that in any way, shape, or form. No, they that, really want. If that's really a problem, they got need to have neutral. Just give them a separate bathroom away from the public. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they got family bathrooms where you can change diapers and all that. Do that for them. There you go. You want to be special? It is what it is. No, but you can't. I was just gonna say the only solution to that is a single bathroom. Like that's like that's stop right. with the public restrooms. Just make them single bathrooms. Put three of them up. Three family bathrooms. There you go. Well, I have All always that. found in these big box stores that any corner of the store uh, becomes a restroom if you have to go bad enough. <laughs> Especially Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you use the corners, Goose, where everybody goes? Just shit right in the center of the store. Well, yeah, the dogs do in the middle of the floor. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> And then if you're in Hobby Lobby, Goose, you can go and smell a giant fake sunflower after. Oh, oh, now, no, no, I, I am, I, I will not shit in a corner of uh, the Lord's discount store. Did not say the corner. Well, or in the in the aisle. Right, so. right in the fucking center. No, uh, and and when this person told me this yesterday, they actually showed me pictures that you know someone had taken. And so, I mean, I mean, it's the state of the world today, and we've said this before, it is beyond words. Coming from someone who has to frequent more head for road calls, I can see them being the first place to do that because of the uh, quality and types of people that are often staying in more head than not. I mean, some of them, some of them chicks got six inches, a hundred pounds, and about four inches of dick on me. So, well, uh, I want to th- let's see some of the comments coming in there. Moving on here. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just a- saying. Alan, it is is true. <laughs> no, I don't even know how to back that one up. <laughs> uh, I do want to thank everyone for sending in emails. I want to remind you, you can always call, text, or leave a voicemail by calling 606-373-3396. That's 606-373-3396. Dirty Dan, how can they email? Uh, well, if you still really want to email us after hearing all that, <laughs> you can email Goose at here at JewBubbleGum.com. Dirty Dan at here at JewBubbleGum.com. Rebecca at here at JewBubbleGum.com. You can always email into the show, Ned or Elliot at here at JewBubbleGum at Yahoo.com. Now, um, is uh, is everyone good to continue? No one needs a break? Chaotic? Are, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Rebecca? I'm all set. I might sneak okay. out and just use the bathroom. Okay. Really yeah, you're totally fine. Dirty Dan, you good to go? And uh, we're going to keep moving on to segment one. And Chaotic603 from TikTok is a special guest. We will let him go first. Please, you know, anything you want to talk about. That's not what what the format says. I know that's not what the format says, but we can jump around in in, in the format. Well, what is the point of the format? Well, it's more it's more guidelines. <laughs> well, it is a it is just a guide to go by. I mean, you know, basically, well, I don't know. Chaotic is a guest. We always it's let guests go. Gum's guide to the galaxy. We always let guests go first. So, uh-huh. anything you want to talk about, brother? <laughs> anything I want to talk about? Anything? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, well, I can, uh, one thing that I do want to address that goes along with the content that I make is a lot of people treat the whole awakening as a depressing thing. Like people, the movies, the symbolizes that you see in the movies, the whole Illuminati thing with music and everything else, they feel like their lives are ruined because of it. And uh, really wanted to address that because 
what I think people don't understand is how much of a lie we've all been living for the past years and years and years. And I mean, the entertainment value of it, I mean, it does suck not some of your favorite movies getting ruined and your music getting ruined and all that. But I mean, it was all bullshit. So what yeah. you're getting from this awakening is your life back, your brain back, your family back, like the world back that we actually live in and not some fantasy world created by a bunch of elites. Sorry, you Dan, what were you though. You got to think, though, here is that a lot of people don't see it as the awakening. They just see it as being woke. And, you know, they're doing the, the stereotyping of that. And that's where a lot of that view comes from, because I, I was reading an article the other day or news headline, and it was talking about a series that's coming out. And they said it's not full of wokeness. I didn't even know that was a fucking word now for that. <laughs> Like that, is that's, that's where 90, well, I, I, according to Forbes or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Oh shit, miss. You're right. Woke versus awakening. Totally different in your point yeah. of view. It's in everyone's point of view. That's actually awake and has their head out of their ass and they don't rely on their neighbor to fart so they can get a fresh breath air. Uh, fre wow. Breath of fresh air. Um, and it's just, <sighs> Like, like it, it, what you're saying, it, it, it is sad, though, because when you look at it as woke and not awakening, it's it's very sad. It's very pathetic. It's just diminishing yet again another side or another group and putting that stigma on it exactly. rather than looking at everything that we try to, to do or or view, which is, you know, there's always beauty and chaos you know, and it, it has to get worse, but it will get better. And, you know, the Phoenix rising from the ashes and all that, yes. uh, you know, it, you can see that growth, but everybody else or the, the majority is just seeing narrow minded and, and closed mindedness of just far, right, far left. Yeah. See, I don't, that's what I hate about that, about the whole conspiracy thing too. Like I'm not left or right. I never, up until two years ago, I never even followed politics. Like, I don't want to be labeled conservative or liberal. I want to, I label You're myself. just correct. <laughs> <laughs> I label myself a free thinking patriot Jedi. If you want to label me, that's I it. I just made a Careful video. now, you're going to get labeled as a Freemason, all right? Oh, I know, right? <laughs> Put me in the untitled category, please. I was yes. not meant to fit cool. into a box. No. Potpourri right for 400, back. please, Alex. <laughs> so that's why people want to argue about this and that. Like, I don't want to argue. I'm not saying I'm right about everything. I'm saying that you're not right because nobody fucking knows about anything. We've all been lied to about every right. fact that we've almost, that we've been fed. So how are you going to argue with me? I'm not telling you you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, so the other, the other day, I just learned some dark shit about George Washington. Lay it out. And, you know, so everybody, you know, uh, at least when I got, when I was growing up and, and in school, that, you know, he had wooden teeth from the cherry tree that he cut down. Yeah. So that was, that was the pieces that were his fake gum. All of his teeth were from slaves that he owned. They would pick out a tooth and they would put it in and all, all of the teeth were all from a different slave. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. So he, he wore those around all day, every day. So yeah. his, his, his gums were made of wood. He didn't have wooden teeth. The gums were wood, but they had real teeth in yeah. him. I had never heard yeah. that before. From slaves. Oh, that, uh, I believe it. That's I believe it. That's what, that's what people don't get. They 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 wonder how things can be so evil nowadays. Like when they hear about the the kids and all the stuff that happens to people. Well, I mean, me personally, I've chased Sony Music, the creator of Sony Music, all the way back to the Imperial Dynasty. Really? Like, yeah. It's, 
Oh yeah, yep. The heritage from the creator of Sony Music, his heritage goes all the way back to Imperial Dynasty. He's got ties to the Hun. Straight out of Sony Music, like this yeah. is all coming from way back. So yeah. the, these barbaric acts that we think is is all crazy and could never happen. I mean, you're talking the beginning days. This is where it's coming from. And like I'm I'm starting to realize more that like why our generations and older ones are struggling with all this I mean like it seems like ninety to ninety five percent of these mass shooters and, and all these terrible people lately are twenty four and under. Yep. And easily they're the ones that have completely that they're the, the the ones that have completely grown up with full access to the internet. I got told the fable of George Washington had wooden teeth because it was from the tree he cut down. No. I just found that shit out. How long have all these kids known all that dark shit? How long have they had access to that? No wonder why it's happening. Because they're not growing up with the fucking fairy tale fables we did. They're fine. Yeah. They're they're able to find out that dark shit right from the get go. Exactly. Not only that, I mean, is- how much positivity is there in the world today? Not a lot. If you're always around negative, if you're always around negative things, seeing negative things, I mean, it doesn't take much for a kid to think there's nothing to live for. So I might as well do what I'm going to do. Right. In my opinion. Now, K six zero three. Uh, let me ask you: Do you still owe uh, Columbia House or BMG money for un- f- uh, unpaid cassette tapes or CDs? Me personally, I was way too young, but my parents okay. absolutely. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I do as well. Um, where you traced it back to Sony Music? Can you talk about that just, just, just for a little bit? Uh, what do you want to know? Uh, Sony Music to me is probably one of the evilest uh, labels out there. I mean, if you search back to the history, who's in it, who's signed by it, it's 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 pretty obvious. What what would be the 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 most evilest artist signed by Sony Music that you've uh, found out in your research? I don't even artists. Yeah. That'd be a tough one to pick out. <laughs> um, okay, well let me let me let me ask you this while you're thinking about that. Marilyn Manson is that straight up an act, or is it 100 percent real? Oh, it's 100 percent real. Okay, because he is evil. I mean, he's got all kinds of accusations out there and everything else. Yeah. But I mean, the man's got a devil worshiping tattoo on his on his right on, on the tip of his hand. I mean, you don't just get that tattoo to show. And plus, the people he hangs out with is you are the company you keep. What? I exactly. mean, he's gotten in trouble for blood related acts as well. Yep. Now, I, I never liked Marilyn Manson's music. I'm sorry. I just didn't. You know, now his his remake of the uh, Eurythmic song. Sweet Dream. Yeah. That was okay, but I didn't really get into his music. The, yeah, a lot I of people don't know I that. I can't listen to that song. There, there's an undertone in that song that is just something trying to fucking speak, and it is dark, and it is not good, and I cannot listen to that version of his song. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't know it's Johnny Depp's best friend. Really? Marilyn Manson and Johnny Depp yeah. are good friends. Now, Where'd you're you the uh, TikTok video that you did make of Johnny Depp with, um, I think, uh, Roman... Uh, Polanski. Polanski. Yeah. Yeah. Do uh, you want to talk about that just a little bit? Yeah. I mean, Johnny Depp is known as Hollywood royalty. So when you got that much pull and that much power, you don't really get busted for anything. But he's been, Johnny Depp's been friends with Roman Polanski about 25 plus years. I mean, there's pictures of him everywhere. He goes online and after he's been convicted of being a pedophile, he goes on air and says that Roman Plasky's not a predator, 
that <clears throat> he's just a good man and misunderstood. It's and to me, Johnny Depp's the only person that has ever mentioned adrenochrome on a movie. So I don't know. You know, he knows what it is. <laughs> so, and that guy it, is one of the youngest looking 40 some year olds I've ever seen. Oh, he's, are you talking about? No, he's not in his forties. He's in his fifties. Yeah. Johnny Depp's in his fifties. now. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, maybe oh, that makes it even worse. 53 or 58. I think. And Amber Heard's his handler. Oh. Absolutely. Was his handler. Still is. So, really? Still yeah, is. that kind of shit the bed. Oh. <laughs> Literally. Giant act. What was that? Rebecca? I think it was. The whole court case is an act. Oh, yeah. It was all here's, my, here's my question. Okay, here's... This has always been... I'm pretty sure if we got Mama Flocker... To answer this, she would probably agree because this has been a long time question that I've had. So all of these, all of these actors, right? These professional actors are in these relationships outside of these movies. And in these movies, right? Like this is so go back to 10-year-old Rebecca asking these questions, right? Like not knowing that this is like, oh my God, these movie actors, you know? And so they're they're faking this relationship in a movie. But they're also like married in real life, right? Like, how are they just not acting in that relationship? Like, how do you ever know if that person is like, if you're truly in a relationship with that person or if it's just to act? Like, that was always my question. Their profession is to lie. Right. Like, so how do you know? Well, we have to ask Maury. You don't. <laughs> Johnny Depp is a good liar because he, he is a good actor. I mean, he's. You know he's he he's a good liar. Um, I think that his sisters, two of his sisters, still live in Western Kentucky. Um, I think one of them is actually a school teacher. He's also made a movie about being a Freemason too, about Jack the Ripper being a Freemason. Yeah. Was that the? So uh, I mean, he's he's surrounded by it. He knows. Uh, what was the name of the, yeah. of the movie you're talking about? Right in front of our face. <sighs> I forget off the top of my it, head. It, it wasn't the 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 butcher, not the butcher, the barber of whatever. No, okay. no, it's a short, it's a short title. Okay, okay, yeah. So Johnny Depp's fifty nine years old, and and he does look good to be fifty nine years old. But you know, if you're doing stuff you shouldn't supposed to be, uh, in 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 some of your research, is there anyone it's called from hell? Nope, Sweeney Todd. That was it. No, it's called From Hell. What's From Hell? What are you talking about? From Hell, the Freemason scene. That's the title of the movie. From Hell, the we Freemason scene. We were talking scene. about something it's else. Johnny Depp. No, Goose asked what the title of the movie was. So, uh, You're correct. Know? You're correct, but the Sweeney Todd was to the barber killing comment. Yeah. Oh, I've been. I was. Re, I was trying to pull the name of the movie up. I didn't even hear that. Thank oh, you yeah, very no, much, that sounds Dan. like we're talking about something else. <laughs> we're already on another train, Dirty Dan. Um, <laughs> chaotic. I can't type that fast. Uh, <laughs> chaotic. And 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 some of your research and 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 stuff into this. Is there any actor, singer, band, anyone that is successful that are a good influence or? wholesome or you know would back up what they say you know if they're out here uh pretending to save children would they do they really do it wait one second dirty dan uh see the way i look at it is anybody that's actually made it if you you can only get to be a certain star to a certain point without paying a certain price so to me, every actor that's out there that's mainstream has paid that price. What they choose to do after that, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, Rhino Reynolds is out there. His wife is uh, active in Save the Children and all that. But is, is it legit? Is it is it sincere? I have no idea. But um, the ones that usually fall off get out of the spotlight and then go after a charity for – that involves children or whatever are usually the ones that come out legit. But if they're screaming it in mainstream media, I always have my doubts. Dirty Dan, you had a 
question or comment? Skillet. Yes. The band. Yes. Very good band. Very good band. Um, Christian metal band. Mm -hmm. All all of their tour proceeds go to CMN. What is uh, CMN for those of those people that don't know? Children's Children's Miracle Network. Okay. Now, I I actually worked uh, backstage security at a skillet show about uh, eight, eight years ago. Very, very friendly, nice guys. Uh, I actually stopped the lead singer when he was trying to get backstage. I had no clue who he was. You know, I had heard of Skillet. I would listened to some of the Skillet songs. What he looked like, I had no clue. And he showed me his badge. He was really nice. And he's like, oh, I'm the lead singer. I'm like, oh, I'm totally sorry. Please. Don't mind me. I'm just a peon security guard. So, uh, <laughs> you know. So, to your, to your question, Goose, and kind of going off what, what Alan said, I agree with, like anybody, any anybody that's at a certain level and still at that level and talking about it, I have my reservations too. As far as like artists go that have that are in the mainstream media, but through my research and like going through the list and like going through Gitmo, you want to know what I I didn't see a lot of. There were a couple sprinkled in there, but for the for the most part, it's country music. You don't see there, like Blake Shelton ain't on that list. Um, you know what I mean? Like they're like there weren't a lot of country artists on that list or involved. What? Uh, okay. And, 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 and this question is for everyone and everyone watching on Twitch, please comment on this and uh, chaotic. You are the guest. So I'll let you answer first. The way that everything has changed, um, especially over the last three to four years where mainstream movies are not as big as they used to be. And I honestly think in the next five years that theaters will be a thing of the past. I think you may have, you know, a handful over the United States, but I think everything will be watching online. And where that entertainment field is is kind of dropping down and not like it used to be. And more people, you know, and I, and I told you, you know, before we started uh, recording, and I've said this before, I, I I get excited about meeting people from TikTok that I follow in real life. So once that big curtain has fell, and there are no more like big celebrities, because honestly, right now, as far as uh, singers, the biggest one that I think is still uh, relevant today is uh, Madonna. But when 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 the curtain has fell on that. What do you think will happen to these people and their evil acts? Am I? Oh, my yeah. answer? Yes, yes, sir. I hope they pay for every little thing they do. What, what, what do I think will happen? I have no idea, to be honest with you. But in the end, I think they will all will pay for every evil act they did. I mean... You can't do that kind of thing. You just can't even, even if you don't believe in good or evil, you just can't, you can't put out that kind of energy and not expect it to come back to you. Do you think that's a reason it may be falling like it is, is because, you know, they've done evil for so long and just the whole entertainment business is crashing down. So, so absolutely, I, absolutely. Being someone who has played on and been to Broadway, that is the fucking breeding ground for all of this. Those people do the most disturbing shit backstage and are the most unpleasant people to be around. That 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 is why it has started falling because I think when this pandemic came out and you know it shut all that shit down. It only opened up like seven, eight months ago. So for that almost fucking two years, they lost their, their breeding pool. So they can't feed off the loose anymore because so many people are waking up. So all of all of that energy that we used to be giving to them, we're not anymore. We're calling that energy back. We're focusing that energy on different things. We are the media now. We are the entertainment. We are we are the new thing. Like nobody's watching that shit anymore. Nobody's participating in those games. And as far as Madonna goes, fuck that shit. All of her new shit that's <laughs> she's summoning people. Well, no, she's summoning I don't people. okay. What I meant by uh, uh, 
that comment is like you know when when I was a little kid, and yes, I was uh, very very, and I, I'm I'm very I was very young uh, when Elvis was alive. But when Elvis died, he was a big entertainer. That's what I meant, you know. And then when he died, you had Michael Jackson that was a big entertainer. That was on the Elvis level. And uh, Madonna was on the Elvis level. That's, that's, that's what I meant by that comment. You yeah. know. I think everybody's just sick of it, to be honest with you. Everybody's sick of the sexualization of our kids. Everybody's sick of being told what's entertaining, what's not entertaining. I mean, once people finally wake up and really, they're going to get pissed. Like, I mean, it starts all the way back with our kids. I have a five-year-old daughter, and, like, I'm looking at putting her in dance, and there ain't no way. Have you seen some of the dance outfits they yeah, put our, yeah. these children in? I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And I think people are just getting, they got, like Dan said, they got that space to see what's really going on, and... We're, we're done with it like it's time to fight back i mean i can i can speak because my sister grew up and it wasn't my parents putting her in it she actually wanted to do it because music was my thing and she she got real tired real quick of hearing oh you're chris short's your sister oh you're chris short's sister like okay um and she went the dance route but you know i saw all that change because i was just sitting over there in my boy scout uniform with my merit badge sash i'm like hey, nobody's gonna take me <laughs> you know and you know i mean like all right after uh madonna dies you don't have any more uh singers or or bands that was on a big elvis level like that today you know and not not from back then at least no i mean what well, name name Someone today, other than Madonna, who was as big as, as Elvis? Dirty Dan? Well, I, I I mean... You can't do it because from, that... From back, from back then, but mm -hmm. like like the, the, the boy band craze, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys are their own... They're, they're the next line or the next spot in that line. It's a, it was a different mass amount of kids and people, but... You know, to them, it's it's the same as Elvis and and Madonna and and Michael Jackson's fame is for the older people, right? But they weren't at the level that Elvis, Michael Jackson, or uh, Madonna are at. I I think they were respectively in their own in their own time. It's you're you're, you're measuring apples to oranges because the times right. were totally and different. The crowds were totally say, different. I don't think that we have that now because the market's so saturated. Whereas, like back when, you know, Elvis and and Michael Jackson and Madonna, like that was it, right? Because it was at such a high level. There wasn't all these other people. There wasn't the internet. There wasn't that accessibility to equipment and recording where people could get at that level. And now you have all these independent artists. And all these other that are at these different levels and so many different genres of music and people listening to such an eclectic collection of things that no one's really going to be at that level. But if you want to compare apples to apples, I would say Lady Gaga would be the uh, would be Madonna's replacement as far as the satanic ritual and the high priestess shit. Well, you know, uh, uh, Madonna has been around for 40 years, and I think once she dies, the way that the, the, the way. What's that? I said she's already dead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Once, once you know, she or the world thinks she's dead or whatever. You know that is uh, the music industry is is the same as the motion picture industry. It will be dead. You know, I mean, it will not hit. And and I don't think it has a, a big as influence today as it did back in the day. The Beatles. I mean. I never really. It I mean, doesn't matter. Was, it, talking about the beat, there was like one or two songs I liked by the Beatles. I know I may take some heat from that, but I mean, how did they bit, not see it? I don't get it. <clears throat> Go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. No, I was. I was just gonna say that. Uh, what was I gonna say? I have a question. If you if you don't know, yes, please. It's kind of relevant too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I was just talking, I was just, I was just talking to Mama Flocker about the careful Dory Dan. I have the power to remove you from this, from this, from this call. 
By all means, go for it then. <laughs> Please don't. We're Please no longer don't. sitting next to each other. I can just fucking click at the X button <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> and that's um, fine. I'll just keep typing the, the link again and coming back in. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I was just talking to Mama Flacker about this the other day, kind of going back to what you're saying with your with your five-year-old and putting her in dance and with the outfits and stuff. I, I kind of have a, a follow-up question to that too is there's this place um, that we drive by in Richmond and it's like a it's like a day activity like camp program for kids, right? Like kind of, it's not like, it's not like school, but it's like a, it's like a daycare that, and they do like all these activities and stuff. And there's all these other kids. And I was like, oh, that'd be really cool to like put Shara to something like that. Even just a couple hours a week, right? Just to like have her do something different. Give me a fucking break the whole bit. Here's where I struggle though. And this is, this is why I haven't done it is I don't know with all of the bullshit in the world today, with the the lack of accountability and and all this stuff of people coming after people's kids, I don't I can't leave her. Like I can't drop her off somewhere without physically being there and watching her. Like how do you deal with that? Believe it or not, that's a silver lining because when we were kids, our parents didn't care anything about us. Well, it's not that they didn't care; they didn't have to. Yeah, they didn't have to. How do you deal with that though? Like with your five year old? How do I deal with it? Yeah. So far I haven't. She's kind of been sheltered ever since she's wanted to start doing things. So I've kind of, anything that I put her into, I got to look at everybody that's involved with it, the teachers with it. I mean, I haven't been able to let go and put her in any kind of program yet, to be honest with you. Just so I'm cause. not alone in this then. Like I'm not. Yeah, because otherwise Ooh. your ass is going to be standing outside as a bush in a ghillie suit with a gun waiting for that motherfucker to come. Exactly. <laughs> right? Because I mean, all it takes is some fucking, some fucking 20 something year old that doesn't give a shit about their fucking job. Not check. Oh yeah, sure. You're their parent and she's gone. Right. She's gone. Or worse, like a fuck. You know what I mean? Like those people in Texas, like they sent their kids to school with, with good intent and never fucking saw them again. Like I can't, I can't. She's never leaving the property. It's, I mean, that's that's a tough question that, you know, a lot of parents face. And this is one question. Well, <laughs> it will, you know, as parents face. I think it will get better at some point, but I think it may get a little bit worse before it gets better. It still Everything's has to get worse. Get worse yeah. it, gets better. Uh, it has it has not blasted through rock bottom yet. We are not even close. And uh, you know the I agree. the world is different today, and I mean it's sad. I mean it really is. Um, does anyone need to take a break, or are you guys good? Uh, I know we've still got a little bit left. So what do we what do we have left? Uh, your topic about the cows, Goose's topic, yeah, my topic, dirty dance segment topic, two, segment oh, three. Yeah, yeah, we're still in segment one. So, do you guys want to take a break for like ten minutes, and we'll come back? And uh, okay, okay, we're going to take a break. For those of you watching on Twitch, we'll be back in ten minutes. For those of you listening to the podcast, we'll be back in just a few moments. You're listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum. We're three, six, nine. Damn, you're fine. Suck it, suck it, suck it to me, baby, one more time. Take a lighter look into the darker side of the world. Join Elliot, Charity, and Beagle as they jump into the dark abyss of hauntings, fables, UFOs, and beyond the spooky family podcast you can find them where you listen to quality podcasts <laughs> from the heart of appalachia located under a shopping mall near the city that moves mountains you're listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum with Goose and Dirty Dan. Cause I was a highwayman 
along the coach roads I did ride. Sword and pistol by my side. Many young maiden lost her balls to my trade. Many soldier shed his life blood on my blade. The bastards hung me up in the spring of '25, but I'm still alive. And I'm welcome still back to here to chew bubble gum. You've got myself, the Queen Rebecca, and Chaotic Six O Three. This week's special guest. We're waiting on. Dirty Dan to come back. Dirty uh, Dan is handling house activities at the moment, so oh, he will be with us shortly. Okay, okay. This is a, uh, uh, during the break, uh, me and uh, Rebecca were private private messaging there, and uh, uh, let's see, let me go back here real quick. Rebecca said, uh, damn, this is a good show, LOL, and I totally, totally, totally uh, agree with that and i didn't realize we had already recorded an hour at that yeah, point i was like yeah. oh shit <laughs> yeah so you know and and, it, and it's like you know i was talking a little bit last week you know we you know the the, the show it has grown and uh have ha, have you listened to us before chaotic or is, it, is this your first time oh no absolutely i've definitely been listening okay okay for a few months now okay. actually you've been a flocker for a while too yeah, yeah, you know, it's been six months, maybe I think. Um, after uh, we talked about how the show had kind of changed directions on last week's show, and I assure everyone listening and watching on uh, Twitch, we will talk about aliens and Alaska and government conspiracies and all that. You know, Antarctica, and definitely Antarctica. Um, you know, but we have grown, and that's what I was saying last week. You know, I mean, these are real, and the state of the world today has made the show grow. I mean, because before, I didn't talk about politics at all, but, I mean, you kind of have to talk about that stuff now. I mean, because it's all connected. You know, politics are connected Absolutely. to the disclosure, disclosure, you know, UAPs, UFO, uh, 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 unexplained. Uh, chaotic, I always ask everyone this that's on the show. Roswell, do you think that that was a legit UFO crash, or do you think it was something else? What's your thoughts on Roswell? I think mean, it was absolutely an alien crash, absolutely. I knew absolutely. I liked you for some reason. I knew I liked you for some reason. <laughs> uh, I mean, to me personally, in my opinion, even if you believe in flat earth or globe or whatever, it's a pretty ignorant statement, in my opinion, to say that we're the only ones here. I just, I, I can't even fathom that because it's, it's a big world out there, no matter which way you look at it. Yes, it is. Um, let's see. Shannon Berg grew up in Alaska. Now, Shannon, or Sharon, I'm sorry, Sharon. I'll be right, I'll be right back. Okay. You guys keep going. Okay. Sharon, uh, while we're waiting on uh, Dirty Dan and Rebecca to come back, and you grew up in Alaska, did you ever see anything that you couldn't explain? And uh, Sharon is on Twitch, so she'll have to type her comment out. Um, I always thought that Russia wanted to try to take uh, Alaska years ago when I was younger. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, Chaotic? As far as Russia taking Alaska? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, and, and I thought that they would want it for the oil reserves. And, all, and that's something I don't understand. The price of gas today, we have all this stuff here. We don't have to do what we're doing, you know. Let's, I mean, you're worried about damaging a tree. Yeah, you know, we do need trees. Trees make oxygen. You know, let's take care of our people first. Let's, if, if we have the resources here, let's harness these resources, you know. What's your thoughts on Absolutely. that? Well, I have a problem with the whole crisis that they come out with as far as like natural resources and climate change is a big one for me like i don't i don't understand uh there's people starving and there's all kinds of crises going on but we're we're worried about something that could potentially happen hundreds and hundreds of years from now i feel like every little crisis that they put out there is there's a reason behind it and it has nothing to do with the well. What do you think over the last five years the reason of all these crises 
have been? Uh, the, the veil is lifting, just like climate change. So my my outlook on climate change, I have a feeling that there's a lot of secrets that lie in the ice, whether it's Antarctica, whether it's Alaska, whether it's wherever. And the fact that it's all melting now, it's making the people who kept the secrets nervous. So <clears throat> with the earth heating up and everything heating up and climate change, it's melting their secrets and they're starting to be revealed. Do you think the government will ever disclose UFOs or uh, what what really is at Antarctica? Or do you think that they'll ride that pony uh, until um, they can't ride it anymore? I apologize. Give me one second here. Hello? Hello? Can uh, you guys hear who that is? Okay. That is Mama Goose. Mama Goose, you are on here to chew bubblegum. How are you doing this morning? I'm just fine. I wanted to call and wish you a happy Father's Day. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, You're on uh, with uh, uh, Rebecca, Dirty Dan, myself, and special guest, Chaotic603 from TikTok. Thank you, Mom, for that. I love you very much. Do, do, Do you have a TikTok account? I don't. No. Well, we gotta get you on TikTok, Mama Goose. Did, did you? I, I need to get one. I've been thinking about getting one. Did you hear what um, uh, Rebecca said? No, uh-uh, I didn't. Let me let me uh, plug you in here real quick. Uh, and it's and it's great that you called because I was actually thinking about calling you towards the end of the show. Give me one second wow. here. Let me see if we can get you plugged in. So you can hear Rebecca, Dirty Dan, and Chaotic. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Rebecca, can you say something to see if she can? Check 102. Can can you hear? Uh, A little bit. Okay. It's like a, yep. Okay. Give me one second. Give me one second. Let me try. Let me try this. Uh, What's that, Rebecca? No, nah, let's see here. Uh, Mom, say something. Hello. Can uh, all right now, uh, Rebecca, you say something. Hello. Can you hear Rebecca now? Uh, that's a little better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we are uh, going to uh, ask you a question, and I want you okay. to give me your honest answer. Let me let me pull a clip up here, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Let me let me see if I can do this, and uh, I'm I'm not able to pull it up right now. We're we're going to have a game with you coming up in the future, and would you be willing to play this game? Uh, yes. Okay. Can you give me the answers beforehand? <laughs> no, 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 no! I can't give you the answers beforehand. Yeah. Oh. Well, I tried. Well, you have Dirty Dan and uh, Rebecca and Chaotic and everyone watching on Twitch <laughs> cracking up. So okay. Um. So, how's your morning going? Is it going good? It is. Okay. I just drank my coffee, and yep, it's going really good. Okay. Well, and uh, people on, on Twitch are saying uh, uh, Grand Rising, which means good morning. And uh, Queen uh, Rebecca actually said poor Mama Goose. So um, I think Rebecca thought that I was going to play a joke on you. But uh, I actually yeah, was. Well, but, I'm disappointed. I thought you was too. Well, all right. Let me, let me ask you a question. What is your favorite porn okay. movie? What? What is your favorite porno movie? David. I don't. Yes. Oh, my. Ah, ah. <laughs> don't do that stuff. <laughs> Mom, I love you very much, and I, and I, I will call you, you after the show. And I'm sorry that I put you on the spot because I can, I can sense your face turning red since I've asked you that. Is that right? Yes. 
I, I love you very much, and I will call you after the show. Okay, I love you too. All right, bye bye. You take care. I bye will. bye. Bye. And uh, that was uh, Mama Goose uh, calling while we were uh, recording the show. Uh, Your poor mother. <laughs> Why, my my Why mother? Why do you do these things to her? Because it's funny. Because I mean, you could hear the shock in her voice. She was just like, "Oh, David. so you know, it's uh, she, she, she loves, I mean, there has been times that uh, and it, Goose get your switch. Yes, there has been times where let's see, what did uh, we're going to get the middle name if you don't stop messing with your mama Goose? There's been times that she's called me and I've not joked around with her. Uh, because I've I've been driving or I've been really sleepy, and not five minutes will go by, and she will call me back, and she she would be like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, why? What? You weren't joking around with me. You weren't uh, aggravating me. I was just going to make sure you were okay." So, uh, me and her have a, have a very 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 special relationship. So and I love my mom it's very like that much. With me and Bob too. Now that you've met Bob, you understand. <laughs> yes. Like if he's not picking on me, something is wrong. <laughs> and uh, Sharon says, "Oh my goodness, she came here to say Happy Father's Day," and uh, then I end up asking her what her favorite porno movie is and embarrassing her. So and I, and, I, and I'm sure that I'm going to get it once I call her after the show. So uh, <laughs> uh, uh, chaotic six oh three, you you got to hear from Mama Goose there. So that's uh, awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> Keep diving down the rabbit hole while we take a break. You're listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum with Goose and Dirty Dan. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Goose for Here to Chew Bubblegum News. A pair of treasure hunters' legal battles with the FBI over a dig for lost Civil War gold has intensified as the duo now allege that the federal government have been underhanded with regards to videos taken during the excavation. For the last four years, Dennis and Ken Padra have been seeking answers regarding a 2018 FBI search on a spot of land in a Pennsylvania state park where they believe a cache of gold bars were buried after vanishing during the chaos at the close of the Civil War. The federal government insists that no riches were found as a result of the dig, but the treasure hunters find that highly doubtful and have uh, pursued the matter in hopes of confirming their suspicions. The latest development in the wrangling between the two parties came about on Friday when the Padres and their attorney reportedly submitted a new legal filing which contains a rather explosive allegation and a remarkable piece of evidence that seemingly confirms their accusation. Specifically, the treasure hunters note that the FBI originally uh, claimed that it had 17 videos from the dig, but when it was ordered to turn over that footage, that number sh uh, shrank to only four videos. When the material was released, it turned out only to be a handful of videos that had been submitted by the Padres to the federal government prior to the excavation, and the FBI asserts that it still uh, has all available footage pertaining to the case. However, in the new legal filing, the Padres include a shocking uh, photograph which was taken on the day of the dig by means of a hidden game camera that the treasure hunters had stationed near the site. In the image, an FBI agent can be seen with a video camera, which the father and son duo uh, contend is proof that the federal government was either being dishonest in their claim that there are no videos from the excavation, or they uh, were illegally destroyed. As a result, the Padres are now asking for a judge to make the FBI pay for a portion of their legal fees as well as trying to get the other footage that was shot by the FBI. Canada is going to share a UFO information with the U.S., officials say. The Canadian government officials are asking their U.S. counterparts about UFOs and nuclear security. Canadian government officials have agreed to share information about UFOs. 
Uh, those contacts were revealed in a pair of letters posted online this week from Canada's National Resources Department and the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, also known as the CNSC. Uh, given the shared priority for nuclear safety and security of nuclear facilities and the growing interest in UAPs in both Canada and the United States, the CNSC is committed to raising the issue uh, with its United States counterpart and sharing any related information going forward. Deputy Minister of Natural Resources John Hannaford said in a letter dated June 6th. NASA says it will spend nine months studying UFOs, but don't bet on the discovery of intelligent alien life. NASA wants to believe, and maybe it will, at the conclusion of the latest study the U.S. government space agency is conducting. NASA announced this week that it would start a nine-month study uh, in the fall to research unidentified aerial phenomenon with a focus on figuring out how to collect data and use the data to further understand going forward. Original Gerber baby Ann Turner Cook sadly passed away. Gerber is deeply saddened by the passing of Ann Turner Cook, the original Gerber baby whose face was sketched to become the iconic Gerber logo more than 90 years ago. Many years before becoming an extraordinary mother, teacher, and writer, her smile and expressive curiosity captured the hearts everywhere and will continue to live on as a symbol for all babies. We extend our deepest sympathies to Ann's family and to anyone who had the pleasure of knowing her, read the announcement. Cook, who was born in 1926, was only a few months old when an artist neighbor named Dorothy Hope Smith sketched her face using charcoal. In 1928, Gerber had a contest to find a face to represent a baby food uh, advertising campaign, and Smith entered her sketch of an adorable, bright-eyed baby, noting that she would finish the sketch if she won, according to the Gerber website. And that's it for here to Chew Bubblegum News. I am Goose. Have a good day and be safe. Are you a horror movie fan? Yeah, I dig horror movies. Are you searching for a great internet horror talk radio show to listen to? Why, sure, that sounds quite spiffy. Then you need to tune in to DeadPit.com. It's the original horror talk radio show. Dead Pit is a show by the fans and for the fans. Uncensored and unbiased opinions are their goal of the show, giving fans honest reviews on new films and vintage classics of the horror genre. Make DeadPit.com your number one horror station destination. When everything feels like the movies, yeah, you bleed just to know your lie. And I don't want the world to see me. Cause I don't think that they'd understand. You're listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum. If Abraham Lincoln were alive, he'd listen. But he's dead. I want to talk about, have you guys heard or do you know who Jason, and I may butcher this last name, Jason Volkovich is. He was also known nope. as the Alaskan Avenger. He is a survivor and a victim of childhood sexual and physical abuse. Okay. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, I, I knew she would know who he is. In 2016, he tracked down like four people that appeared on Alaska's sex offender website, and he dished out his own brand of justice. Oh, now, yeah. Okay. Now, people have stated that he also robbed these people of some of the stuff that they had, and he would track down um, single mothers that were having a hard time, and he would give them what he stole from these people. Uh, now, he did live in the you know continental or the United States as a whole, and he had, did have you know various other charges in some of these other states. Um, he's currently serving 28 years for beating up these pedophiles that, that hurt people. Uh, and, and yes, he is a modern-day Robin Hood. He is a American hero. Um, what really alarms me about his 28-year sentence is what the judge said when she sentenced him. And her exact words from Judge Aaron Marston 
with the uh, Anchorage Superior Court in 2018, she said, Vigilante, vigilanteism won't be accepted in our society. <clears throat> but yet, pedophilia will be accepted. And he got sentenced to more time than pedophiles did for hunting these vicious animals down and whipping their asses. What's your guys' thoughts on that? <laughs> Anybody have a get out of jail free card? I, I think I, I think I, go ahead, chaotic. I think our whole gear, our, our whole system's geared towards protecting pedophiles. Hundred percent. <clears throat> it's crazy. I, 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 I don't understand. If you like, LA County is one of the worst. You could the things that people get away with in LA County, as far as crimes against children, is it's disgusting. Literally. <clears throat> And the fact that she called it vigilante, she knows something was wrong. She knows he was doing something, but yet still gave him 28 years for it. Yeah. And like I said, that's that's more time than than, than pedophiles get. That, if uh, they even get any time at all. It depends on their rank and who they've paid off. Well, There's so many yep. senators and political officials that have just gotten off scotch-free with a slap on the wrist. Fuck, one of them got a voted president. Absolutely. Well, he didn't get voted in. Yep. You, you can go to change.org and type in the name Jason, last name spelled V-U-K-O-V-I-C-H, and sign the petition to set him free. Um, again, his last name, his first name is Jason, V-U-K-O-V-I-C-H. And if you've not heard of this, please, I encourage you to do your own research and look this up because this is not right. Um, if I had to get out of jail free card, I would give it to him. And I would definitely give it to him and shake his hand and say thank you for going out and doing what you've done. Um, when you research the story a little bit, they're saying now that he kind of regrets what he what he did. I think he's just saying that to, you know, I don't I don't think he truly regrets it. I wouldn't truly regret it. I would regret getting 28 years, but... You know, we need we need more people like this to step up and protect not only your child but your neighbor's child, your you know a stranger's child, to make sure that our children are took care of and not, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's I I, I, my my blood pressure starting to go up. I'm starting to lose my train of thought. That I'm you know there you know we just need to get. I mean, you know, I am tired of right being wrong and wrong being right. We need to get back on, on, on the right track. I just don't, I don't understand how touching a child isn't one of the highest crimes in the world. I, I, I'll never understand that. Like you're talking about the people the, <clears throat> that cannot defend themselves. They have no voice. They have no nothing. But people that get away with sexually touching these kids are getting off with months of probation. Or a year in jail, and then when they go to jail, they're protected. They go to PC and they're oh, they'll kill tucked them. away. They'll kill them. Yeah, why aren't we being the first on the line to kill them? Yeah, That's the, exactly, exactly. Uh, but I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention and to talk about Jason, uh, Rebecca. You're going to talk about the cattle, correct? I want to talk about the cattle. So, the the only thing. That has been a variant in the story is the number. It was 2,000 and then it was 3,000 and now it's 10,000. So all these cattle just dropped dead, just fucking died. Animals, here's my thoughts animals don't just die like that. Like there's the weaker ones, if it was from the heat, if it was from poisoning, if it was from the food, there's still gonna be a discrepancy of time, right? Because the weaker ones are going to die first. And then the, the stronger ones are going to survive. And you're telling me that out of all those, there's not at least one of them that didn't make it. And those are beef cattle. Their diet, pretty bad. I'm sure that you can fill, fill this in here or, or back me up. Their diet is incredibly fucking regulated. Like they don't just eat whatever. Well, <clears throat> it depends. Um, on on the video, I I don't know if it, oh it was Corey the video Corey Jeep yeah. Logo and Van shared, 
Um, yes, those are beef cattle. However, those were not natural grass fed beef cattle. Those were not right. free range. Those were pump full of pump full of testosterone and hormones. But yes, they still they are constantly fed the exact same time, the exact same amount, the exact same food, and the exact same injections, and 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 they are monitored. And my um, other thing is, did so, this even happen? Because there's no other, Amy brought this to my attention too, and a couple other people have been commenting commenting it on my video, is that there's no other videos of this. Like, there's just that one. So did it even happen? Or is it just a false story to get everybody fucking riled up to push the food shortages, to push the meat crisis, to push fucking Bill Gates' synthetic bullshit whatever? I think it really lined happened. up pretty nicely. Yeah, I mean, but they were... You don't you don't take dead animals to a slaughter, so I mean they could have they could have all contracted a disease or something that rendered that meat unsafe. Um, they could have you know they could have they could have had something. A that video didn't have an unusual amount of dead cows. You got to think for big beef farms, if they yield a thousand cows a year for growing. Uh, or for harvest, they'll lose about 20% of them. But when they pump them up so big, they get so much money off them that that 20% or less doesn't even make a dent on their profit. Um, at, like can we, the feed could have been tainted. Their, their injections could have been tainted. There, there could have been some underlying issue that is of course not going to be said because it doesn't fit the narrative. Um, and it's only one one video as as mentioned i I, I couldn't find anything else on it i know and the other thing is if it was some sort of like toxin or if it was the heat which is what all the reports are trying to say is it was the heat which it didn't even happen on the hottest day that they had there is nobody nobody <laughs> else's cows were affected like all of the other, you, so you're telling me like none of the other cows that's that are in this huge heat, like in Texas and in California and in, in other places that have this extreme weather, you're telling me that they they've never had a mass death like this. I don't know. I don't. It wasn't. Nat here's where. Here's where the hell I'm gonna die on. It wasn't natural. It was definitely planned for sure. Whether the fake video was planned or the the true slaughter of these animals. Either way, it's fucking disturbing. Uh, yeah, either way, either way, it is disturbing. But <clears throat> there is, like, that's. I'm not even getting riled up about it. I'm not even paying any mind to it because, coming from someone who who you know, not beef farm but dairy farm, um, it's it's just simply the, the the things being said and with the evidence or proof or lack thereof, it's just not correct. Right. It's not true. So you don't think it's true that 10,000 cattle are dead or what they're saying about them? Oh, I mean, I think about 10,000 cattle are dead, but that's from a fucking beef mill. That's not from some farmer's field that showed about 60 cows lined up that were all bloated sitting in heat. And they, they just they laid them there. That, Like I said, it could be for a uh, compost pile. They could be doing something else with them. It could have had a bad injection set that went in them that, that rendered them and, and, and like we don't know how long they were there. If they were bloated, it didn't seem like there was juices leaking on the ground. So I don't know if they were dead. They could have had paralysis. Um, you know, we don't we don't know what a little drive by video of a couple of rows of dead black Angus were were doing or showing. Right. There's there's I'm no going off point the in getting reports, put up in arms about it. I'm going. I'm not just going off the video. I'm going off the news as well news from the woman who says it's all a bunch of distraction that's why i'm asking the question that's why that's my topic this week but but that like there, there there's no reason to pay any mind to it until there are multiple confirmed sources and occasions like i said but Bad drugs get put out all the time. The <clears throat> this goes in line with the baby food sh shortage. This goes in line with everything. Like this is, and it was also an episode in Yellowstone too. Like they have to tell us everything before they do it. I'm just saying, 
There's okay. something fishy going but the on. Only, the yeah. only video that is circulated about it via social media and via the news is the same fucking video. See, my common sense right there tells me that 10,000 cows would be pretty easy to show a picture of. Yeah, like, I wanted Howie to go see. Like, not just 60, you know what I mean? Like, if there was 10,000 cows laying in a field, how it would be pretty easy to get a, a wide shot of all like of those cows. Yeah, like... Right, that's what I'm saying. This is such a so bullshit good. fucking hooker that everybody's losing their mind about it and it was a fucking what like 25 second long video okay yeah. going yeah. S- slowly ro- like you could you could stop and it, it, and before it got from one the start of the frame to the end of the frame and like moving okay. that you could count cows and they were in they were in sixes and then it would be an aisle and then six more and then an aisle like it's not it's not uncommon in the cattle world it's not uncommon at all we don't know what the cause of it was, i.e. injection or planned or what. Like something could have gone wrong with their, their food, their injections. It could have been planned that, you know, maybe maybe they were all bulls and it was an actual breeding farm and it was their time. They had gotten too old. They weren't producing anymore. The You know, they, they had no need for them anymore. Maybe they humanely euthanized them and some dumb schmuck going down the road just happened to go pass by as they were lining them up to, to prepare them to take them to whatever disposal site or company pick them up or compost or whatever and just say, oh, my God, look at all these dead cows. And, and bam, 15 seconds of fame. Okay. well, But it's not just TikTok, though, Dirty Dan, is what I'm telling you. It's not like... You're not listening. It's okay. the same video on every news outlet. It's the same video on every social media site. Okay. If it's real or not real, hit... Uh, did hit hit serve the same purpose because it you know scares people up. It makes them panic, and if it is right. real, it, it's going to make it harder on us in this economy, which will scare people up and make them panic. So, regardless if it's real or or you know not real, it still uh, achieved the same goal. Yeah, absolutely. Because of where society and mainstream <clears throat> media news sources come from. Just some yeah, they play off the fact that we'll never know 100% what's true and what's not. Right. They play off it. Dirty Dan, right. what's your uh, topic for this week? Uh, I had nothing prepared because I had the craziest of weeks. Okay. But I, I now I do have a question. Of the not week? Not the question of the week. Okay. Not the question of the week. I do have a question... Um, that that I wanted to get all of your opinions on. Um, and and it's it kind of ties in with the the whole beef shortage and like with Rebecca constantly bringing the attention back to like it's the false flag because look at all this all these processing plants and everything they're they're burning down on us. Is what do you think? the next step is going to be for us in this time with all this going on. I said it wait. earlier. I, I wait. Oh, did you have something else to add to it? Well, I, I was just like, like where, where I, I guess I want to say, where do you see the progression going towards? I said it earlier and I stand behind it. I think that we'll have a man-made drought. I think that, they will cover the Midwest or our farming states with uh, chemtrails, and we will have a drought. Yeah, I'm right there. I think it's round two of the Great Depression. I mean, the Dust Bowl, it, it, it seems like that's exactly what they're shooting for on, on, on every level. Because they're going to drive everybody to have nothing, be completely reliant on the government or yourself. I think that's exactly what they're going for. Rebecca? It's funny that we, we always watch these movies and then these things are happening because we do the movies on Friday. So we just watched Interstellar, right? And what happened? The fucking dust came and the droughts happened and they couldn't get crops anymore and they couldn't feed anybody. 
And so the populate, the people started dying. They just started dying. It's survival. I think that everything needs to come back to neutral and we need to stop fucking with shit. Just let it be. Stop fucking with it. And then it's going to, it's going to weed out. I kind of feel like, I feel like we're going to turn into Wally. Yeah, you said I that feel like week. there's going to be some some of it that turns into Wally, but I really feel like I'm going to go back to my original statement. This is going to this is going to teach people to be self sufficient. This is going to bring communities together. This is what needs to happen as a society. We need to regress back to that bargain and trade mentality of these little communities just coexisting peacefully. I still want I a zombie like apocalypse. What, what was that chaotic? I feel I feel that's going to what Rebecca was saying. I feel that's going to happen out of necessity just because people are resilient and adaptive. So they're going to come back to home and come back to all that just because <clears throat> that's where the love is. That's where security is. I think you're right. I think we'll lose a lot of people, uh, especially our older generation. Um, I think, you know, it will be people our age that actually has to step up to the plate and take care of the older generation and watch out for them. And I'm going to be honest, you know, I don't think you can step up to the plate and take care of the younger generation because I think they're on a different plane. They think a different way. Uh, Some of them don't. I think the majority of them do, you know, because it's a different world we live in, and I think that's sad. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Rebecca, we're going on to you. Last week's question of the week. Can you read some responses for us? Yeah, I actually, um, I have them right here. Um, and I was. Are you doing the screen share thing? Saving them so that because it won't pull, it won't pull from my, my telegram. I have to save them as photos here, but we have some really good some really good answers here. I'll pull a couple up. So my question was, what would society look like if uh, bullying didn't exist? And I got to, hold on, I got a minute. I need a second screen here, Goose. We need a second screen. <sighs> Dirty Dan, while she's, me. while she's pulling that up, you need to be thinking of a new question of the week. I already got it, bro. Oh, do you really? Okay, good, good. I've got I've got six lined out for me. I've used one. Okay. I gotta full screen this thing and make the comments disappear so I can read it. So here are some of the responses from last week, and Rebecca, you can read away some of those. So I can read them to you. You can so read. We have uh, starts at young age. Mixed at recess with third graders, um, do something amazing for someone else, and all you ask in return is that they pay the kindness forward to pass it along. People are saying like it would be amazing if if bullying didn't exist. Enlightening, healing. Uh, more people would speak their minds more freely. Hold on, let me pull up another one here. Apparently, I can't do them all at once like I thought I could, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, There'd be smiles everywhere. Bullying is kind of why I'm not really getting on here as much. Tired of seeing it. Talking about TikTok yeah. would definitely be a better place. Would cultivate real, pure, unadulterated friendships every day. Illness would decrease and people would live better as a result of it. So we got some. And if you want to check that out, the video is still up. Um, you can still always comment and you know leave your answers. But I really think that it would it would give people the opportunity to. Be comfortable in their own skin. Love is something that, as we learned from Interstellar 2 that we just watched again, is love is the only thing that can't be, it can't be produced. It can't be quantified. It can't be understood scientifically. It's so pure and and natural and the root of everything. Like it all boils down to love. Love is the answer, 100%. So if we can just love each other for the human beings that we are and not go after people's imperfections and not go after people for being different and not go after people for thinking another way that doesn't align with us, it doesn't matter because that bullying, that hate, that negativity, that's all taught. 
And it's a way that society keeps us divided and separated and against each other. And if that didn't happen, the world would truly be an amazing fucking place. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. That's my Well said. Uh, next week on the show, we are going to have a, a, a special guest as well. Uh, and we may have one in the studio. And um, Rebecca and Dirty Dan, I talked about this guy at the la- uh, when we talked backstage at the end of the show last week. <laughs> and um, that goes along with, with what you were just saying, and we'll get into that next week. Dirty Dan, what is the new question of the week? So this one was actually inspired by my wife. And uh, it, it is, how would you explain your life to a complete stranger that you just met at an event? How would you? Is it my wife runs in a call? Is that what it is? Because I'm pretty sure it's the guys that work. <laughs> no, not at all. So uh, ask that question once again. How would you explain, uh, explain your life or wife? To a com- okay. life, to a complete stranger that you just met like at an event a gathering just a complete stranger you just met okay that is a very good one Uh, can you can you just can you answer that real quick for us dirty dan like let's pretend that you don't know alan and you just Mm -hmm. met him alan dirty dan dalen dalen wow never mind alan dirty dan dirty dan (laughs) alan Dallin Erty Ann. Dallin Erty Ann. <laughs> uh, so my life, uh, to coin my wife's phrase, is a complete shit show. Um, if you stick around long enough, you'll see something happen that you wouldn't believe otherwise. You're seeing it all is, shit. <laughs> I just, I just, I gave you credit. I just gave you credit. Um, it is chaos it is peace it is clutter it is emptiness everything you can think of in your wildest imagination has or will happen i mean he's not wrong <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is is very 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 cool dirty name um our uh, shout out to the TikToker of the week this week is our friend of the show, Luke Fugit. And you can find him on TikTok under the username Luke uh, Fugit uh, with YT at the end. Uh, I think that stands for YouTube. YouTube so, yep. yeah, L U K E F U G A T E Y T at Luke Fugit YT on TikTok. He is our. TikToker shout out of the week. I want to remind everyone to be sure to check out upcoming episodes of Mingo Moments, Cooking with Dirty Dan, and the Shipwreck Show. A very special thanks to Chaotic603 for uh, being here and joining us on this episode of Here to Chew Bubblegum. Be sure to like, comment, and follow his account. Dirty Dan, it's your turn now. All right. And uh, as always, be sure to check out a couple of friends of our shows. Um, I just want to actually ask something real quick. Why can't I type in the comment section, but you can't? I don't know. I can't. When Ship and I do our lives, I c- only the host can type into the comments. It's stupid. You Stream can Yard type in better. the private chat, but you can't comment. I, I don't like <clears throat> it either. StreamYard do better. Anyway, back to friends of the show. Be sure to go check out. Spread the message. Support the cause. Spread the awareness. TillValhallaProject.com. Goose's favorite struggle. Uh, be sure to check out our friend, and his company and the great things he's he's trying to get done for our planet and us. That's DJ Nikki, the founder of Carbon Capture Shield. You can check him out, carboncaptureshield.com. And lastly, check out our friends over of the show, Goose's Shirt, Adventures with Purpose. You can check them out on YouTube and see all the good they do and they bring and everything that is branched off from there. You can go check them out and support them on their website, adventureswithpurpose.com. I want to say special thanks to Carlin for all the voiceover work. Uh, we will also, in the next few weeks, be having some voiceover work from the legendary 
Gino Samuel from YouTube that uh, has uh, put out about 70 parts of the Chris Chan documentary. Uh, we're in the process. We will be having some new voiceover work for him as well. Uh, be sure to check out and support friends of our show that have their own shows. I'm talking about CK and Uncle Bill over at DeadPit.com. Talk Junkie with Justin Perkins and uh, Retro Cult with Justin Perkins. Jordan Brad of Down on the Holler. Elliot Gertie and Beagle over at SpookyFamilyPodcast.com. The Mountain Mysteries Podcast with Chris Sloan. And if you miss Cronkite, you can find him now on YouTube with Snowman and Large Marge over at Paranormal Trucker. Don't forget about Beyond the Paranormal Podcast with John Marshall every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. You can find that on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. If you want to awaken more, be sure to check out the lovely, sweet dog lover. I can't say enough nice things about Careful. her. Rebecca Careful. Short. Tread lightly, Goose. <laughs> Rebecca Short on TikTok and <laughs> Twitch. That'll do it for this week. We'll see you next week. And until then, so long for now. Maybe I'm not leaving. Maybe I'm just going home. Bye, Flockers. Thanks for listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum. Tune in next time as we dive deeper into things the government doesn't want us to know.